I'm sure most of you have heard of Civita. We are dedicated to the prevention of blindness through the development of sustained release drug products and technology. And as uh, our previous speaker, Dan, alluded to, we have three FDA-approved products, one of which, Illuvian for DME, is licensed to our colleagues over at Alamara Sciences. And the other two products, Redisert and Vitrocert, are licensed to Cal and the team over at Bausch & Lomb. So as we look at our Dorasert technology, it's a very small insert, three and a half millimeters long by 0.37 millimeters in diameter. It can be uh, used to deliver a wide range of small molecules for anywhere from months up to three years, which is what the Alluvian is, a three-year product. It can be, uh, the polymers can be designed to be bioerodible or non-erodible, and we have patents on the technology and the inserters that go beyond 2027. The great thing about this device is its linear release. If you look on the left, that's the first 30 days in one of our fluocinolone acetonide release profile studies, and all the way out on the right to 168 days, you see that there's that consistent microdosing. Right now, it's a very exciting time for Civita on two fronts. We continue to deliver on critical milestones, which I'll discuss briefly. But just as importantly, it's exciting that we are beginning to develop our launch plans for our product for a three-year DuraCert for uveitis. So we announced, which I will share with you today, the results of our second phase three in June. We filed an MAA in Europe in June, and we also, uh, as Dan alluded to, recently last month signed a, a licensing agreement for Europe, Middle East, and Africa for rights to that product for uveitis. Uh, we entered into a collaboration deal utilizing our bioerodable Dorisur technology with a major pharma company. By the end of the year, we expect to sign additional collaborations, but most importantly, we plan on and expect to file an NDA fourth quarter of this year in the U.S. So let's move into the clinical data. We have three studies that were done, two phase threes. This program involved over 300 patients, primary endpoint, prevention of reoccurrence of uveitis in these patients. Both met their uh, primary endpoint at six months, highly statistical significant. Just to give you a flavor of our first phase one, 18.4% of patients had a recurrence in the Duracert arm, where nearly uh, Seventy-nine percent of patients in the a sham group had a recurrence. So we see a pretty dramatic difference between the treatment arms. At 12 months from our first study, that was showed to be a durable response with 27.6 in the Dorisert arm versus nearly 86 percent in the sham arm. And these are Kaplan-Meier curves between the sham in red Dorisert in blue showing the recurrence rate. And as you can see, the curves uh, di diverge rapidly and the effect is maintained over the full 12 month follow up in 001. Now I'll move on to our second phase three study, the results of which were just released. In that study, we also achieved highly statistically significant. Uh, endpoint on the primary, 21.8% of patients having a recurrence at six months in the Duracert arm versus 53.8% in the sham arm. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you the results of the two phase three studies, both on efficacy and safety, side by side. On the left is the most recent 005 study results where the study was conducted in India in 153 patients. On the right, it's our first phase uh, three study, 001. And as you can see, consistent results, even though different regions of the world and patient populations were enrolled. Uh, one of the things that we did note, and not surprising, given the Kaplan-Meier curves that you saw, 
the need for adjunctive treatments, be it uh, systemic steroids or uh, immunosuppressants, was very high in the uh, sham-treated patients. This is through six months in the new study. Here it is through 12 months in the initial phase three. Not surprising. If we look at mean IOP by visit, we see that there's about a two millimeter difference uh, at each visit over a six month period in both trials. The amazing thing is just how consistent this data are. If we look at the actual difference from baseline at six months in the two studies, once again, very consistent data, 1.1 in the 05 study and 1.4 in the 001. The use of IOP lowering medicines between the two groups in the both studies, while they differed between the studies, within the studies there's a similar use of uh, IOP lowering agents in both the active and the sham treated group. And cataract surgeries as expected, uh, there is a need for cataract surgery over time in the Duracert arm, but also interestingly in the sham arm in the India study, we saw actually more cataract surgeries, uh, which was reverse of the US and global study. So just to leave you with a few um, highlights of our pipeline, we're in filing mode for our three-year Duracert for posterior uveitis. We're very excited about that. We are exploring a shorter duration product using the Duracert technology, and we're looking at different regulatory pathways to hopefully uh, take that from preclinical quicker to um, registration. We're looking at a TKI for wet AMD. And while I know we are all focused here on the eye, we're also in a phase one study for OA. Thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate it.